Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to space, the final frontier. My name is Kazar, and we are playing the Fermi Paradox today. Uh, this is one of the Steam Next demos for this really awesome thing that they've started to do. They, I think they did last year as well. They started just letting us play a whole bunch of games. All these developers, some sort of small-time developers, with these really, really awesome games. And uh, I'm now on part two of playing this game. I'm really enjoying it so far. We've got the prune um, people, and we're trying to get them to meet up with humanity. And let's just see if we can get this... Uh, these two societies to meet up and connect. This is what we're going to be focusing on today. Let's see what the humans got up to. Ooh, great, the lizard people are here. What? Soul is receiving alien signals. Okay, well, could be good, could be bad. I don't know, let's see. The humans built several unmanned space probes to examine their solar system. One of these probes wanders far into the Oort cloud of the Sol system and is picking up the peace signal of the Prune civilization. Yay! They're picking up that signal we sent, like, ages ago. All right. All right. This is a present from a small, distant world, a token of our sounds, our science, our images, our music, our thoughts, and our feelings. We are attempting to survive our time so we may live into yours. Voyager, Golden Record, NASA Space Probe, 20th Century, Soul System. Awesome. So we were kind of... I mean, this is first contact, right? I mean, we're not, like, physically contacting, but, like, there's somebody else out there. They're figuring it out. All right, let's zoom in here. What are we going to do? Oh, gosh, we can't... Really? Oh, no. So I don't have enough synthesis for enthusiasm, which is what I want to do. So now we can see where we're actually taking some of the, the worst decisions earlier could actually help us now. So this is... Um, this is what we were talking about in the last uh, section of the playthrough, is that sometimes you have to take bad decisions in order to get more synthesis, so that later on when you make, when you finally get to the really necessary decision, the one you really want to make, um, which would be enthusiasm, yes, let's, let's meet you guys, um, I can't afford to do so. So the cosmos, the power of the cosmos, the synthesis here is not going to let me do that. So let's see what we got here. Um, the single is relayed to Earth, and the scientific community rushes to build a whole fleet of additional space probes. This leads to a massive spike in technological advancement, which would be wonderful, but... Alas, it is not to be. So, ignorance. The probe is able to pick up the signal, but it is too weak to, s weak to send anything back to Earth before it gets lost in the Oort cloud forever. <sighs> okay, so we can maybe not make that contact, essentially. Or we can make it and essentially attack them. The humans find the content, the content of the peace signal disturbing. They continue their space probe project, but decide to arm the unmanned vehicles with autonomous weapons in order to attack any intruder in the soul system. Uh, this seem, this is very, this is a very strange part of this game. Is that you're kind of this. Um, omnip omnipotent being controlling all this. So I know that the prune are are, are pretty normal and, and actually I would say more benevolent uh, society. They're, they're really kind of on the um, the utopia side of the scale, but the humans don't know that, and I don't have enough synthesis to tell them that. So what would humans do? They'd probably get scared and ready to attack. But it's not what I want. <laughs> uh, let's just... Let's just wait. No? You know what? This is what humans would do. Humans are dumb, panicky animals. They would go for hostility. So, maybe... Just maybe, this extra 20 will get me something down the line that actually will stop all all-out war between the humans and the um, and the prunes evil murder robots that I kind of had some of them produced I'm I'm doing great as an omnipotent being here 
All right, space probes. All ready for war. What do we got? Ooh, we got resources. Let's go for resources. Video games of the humans are showing ways of living in harmony with Earth. Okay. So we're getting more um, peaceful games, which I'm all for. Um, let's go for this one. A once powerful government on Earth falls apart and disbands. The Rome of its time. Ooh, let's go for whatever this mystery thing could be. Environmental measures by human ecologists are used to restore a polluted land region on Earth. Good. Awesome. So Terra Nil. Got it. Um, let's see here. Ooh. So this means we're going to have less casualties. So let's go for that. Okay. So this is this is my question in the last section of the playthrough as well. Um, some of these can be confusing because normally when I'd see a plus sign on something, I'd imagine that it would go up. But that would be the opposite in this case because the amount of casualties we want the plus signs because it means there's going to be less casualties. Um, but uh, if we get negative signs, there'd be more casualties. So it's it's less about what will positively or affect this scale and more about the positive or effects overall of what we'd be talking about. So uh, so more resources or less resources, that sort of thing. Okay. Hey, a conflict between two major nations was settled peacefully. At least we did something right. All right, prune dominions. We're we're just bouncing back and forth between these two. Ooh. What? No. What? You gotta tell me what happened, dude. Come on. Interplanetary plasma exchange. The prune create a massive plasma create massive plasma launchers with the ability to repel ultra hot ionized gases inside an electro electromagnetic shell. During a system wide conflict, glowing plasma bolts are fired at planetary and orbital settlements. Oh god, I just talked about how benevolent you guys are and you're doing this? What? Our only goal is to serve the origin one who created us. Our only purpose is to burn up the in the plasma fire of our enemies. Ugh. Motto of Governor Vaha's personal clone guard. Great. So they've got a personal clone guard. Okay. Alright. Let's see what this is all about. Let's see what our options are. Whoa! Oh my god! So we could go for complete extinction. The bombardment of plasma projectiles melts titanium enclosed space stations and turns the surface of planets to glass across the Galice system. There is no hope for the prune. So I can totally just destroy them completely here. I can't believe that's only worth 40 synthesis points. I feel like that's 100 synthesis points right there, because that's the annihilation of an entire race. That seems a little low. I, like, that... When, when, when the entire cosmos puts a value on your entire race's um, lives, that, that seems to be a low blow. Um, I mean, I know that we had another sort of upstart species potentially going on in the, I was the Vox system, I want to say. Um, but I don't really want to lose these guys right now because we're just starting to get on the cusp of something good here. Um, so I could go for minimal survivors, which means that I'm not going to have any cost, but I'm going to have a lot of potential casualties. I'm going to lose a lot of people. We're already so low at the, as the prune go. And then we're also going to go back uh, to the Bronze Age, it seems like, from where we're at now. Actually, I don't know what two steps behind the Solar Age is. Oh, maybe the Steel Age. Or we can close call. They develop defensive technology that is able to neutralize the magnetic field surrounding plasma bolts. This causes the gas to dissipate before impact. But that's going to cost 30 synthesis. Oh, man. Oh, man. Do we take a huge hit? I'd say we might just take a huge hit and just go for that and see what happens. Because they're not going to be extinct. They're just It's just going to be so devastating to the overall population. 
It just figures that they would go Krypton on us and that the home world would explode while the, the other ship is going off towards Earth. Alright, let's go for minimal survivors. Oh boy, let's see how badly this hurts. Ooh, oh, no, oh god. Oh, stop, 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 stop. God, I've only got 4.1 million left. Oh, and look at all the potential casualties. Okay, well, at least you guys aren't going to run out of food. That's a horrible silver lining there. After Glee C was completely burned to ashes by massive plasma charges, the survivors dwell in interplanetary spaceships from now on. The clans of these ships call themselves the Solar Nomads. Oh my gosh. So, oh gosh. So, they're they're stuck in space now. They've they've raised their planet, and they're stuck in space. They've gone uh, they've gone quarian. Oh no. All right, so we can go question mark, or we can go more technology. I'm gonna see if we can try to bring some of this back. The Gleesi, on Gleesi, the new ideas of a brilliant astrophysicist are circulated widely among the solar nomads. So this is cool though that we've now changed. Um, Gleesi is a whole sol solar nomad clans. It's changed who they are um, at this point. Um, okay, let's see here. So we can go down in, Utop in Utopia. Uh, down in that, or just a little bit. Uh, I think I'm gonna go on down in Utopia. It just makes sense, uh, roleplay-wise, because <laughs> they just clashed their planet. So let's go ahead and do that. Bring that down a little bit. Gain some more here. A powerful supervisor became very unpopular and feared by the solar nomads. Okay. Uh, I'm definitely gonna go for whatever gets us more people. Um, a new big clan spaceship was developed by the solar nomads. Okay. Alright. So we got... Okay. I want to say... Let's go for the big risk. The Solar Nomads form a new media to illustrate the history of their civilization. Okay. Cool. More people. Let's do this. A major clan spaceship in the Solar Nomads' growth significantly in size and influence. Cool. Evolution event. This is new. What could this be? Tau Ceti system. Sapien light evolved on Tau Ceti. That's a, this is the planet that um, that they actually lost an entire species on. Gosh, I hope they look like that. We'll see. New civilization is born. A life form on Tau Ceti III started making simple tools and developed a rudimentary language. But which species will form a Stone Age civilization in the Tau Ceti system? Many were increasingly of the opinion that they'd all made a huge mistake in coming down from the trees in the first place. Douglas Adams, science fiction author, 20th century CE soul system. That's funny. We got a lot of great quotes coming in through this game. All right. All right, so what kind of species are we making? So Tau Ceti, a, a yellow dwarf star, is orbited by the swamp planet Tau Ceti III and multiple other habitable planets. The highest amount, uh, the highest mountains of Tau Ceti III are so tall that their peaks reach vacuum space. Many planets on the surface are capable of moving around on their own. Many plants on the surface, sorry. Uh, are able to moving around on their own. In contrast to the rich flora and fauna of the surface of Tau Ceti III, the oceans never developed any life forms and are a liquid desert. Interesting. Interesting. So land is the only place that life is forming. Okay, so we can create an unbalanced species. Ooh, oh, we get different. Oh, that is cool. Oh, that is cool. So we get this dinosaur looking thing monkey looking thing so again uh, just gotta say I'm thrilled with the kinds of aliens that are showing up in this game um, I'm really tired of seeing the the standard Star Wars and Mass Effect fair where everything is uh, bipedal humanoid um, the fact that we've got something that looks like it's got six legs um, and six eyes is great we've got this uh, like I said velociraptor like thing and then literally a plant and I'm just like, 
these tall, intelligent plant creatures undergo countless stages in their century-long life cycle. I'm just, I'm really leaning towards the plant just because, one, it's a plant planet. Um, obviously, it's a balanced species, which is good. We're going to have to pay for that, though. Um, but, uh, but just the, again, for the fact that it's the furthest thing from a, sa uh, a, a homo sapien that we could possibly imagine. Um, unbalanced. The Maru, sneaky, sightless, and cruel. These bands of small raptors. Okay, they, they call them raptors too. Look at those chompers. They literally look like they've got, like, incisors going on there. Um, they plague the vast jungle forests. Ah. Um, and then the Odo are aggressive ape creatures in colorful fur. Their packs wander the wide mountain ranges. So, again, sort of middle of the line there. Um, but these ones are... I mean, they're definitely cool looking. Oh, gosh. I'm going to go with the plant. I like... I can't not choose the plant. Uh, the Rama. Look at them. Home of the Rama tribes. <laughs> the plants. Oh, I love it. Okay. So they're actually more utopian, which is cool. Um, they are doing pretty good there. They've got thousand beast herds. So they must eat or raise be uh, animals that's interesting um, there's a lot there's quite a few of them and they're in the Stone Age okay so so that answers my question the Stone Age is tech level zero so <laughs> we'll, we'll figure out what all the different levels are uh, let's choose this one the civilization of the Rama is born awesome cool so they're advancing to the next towards the next age all right prune colonial expedition okay this is the spaceship that we sent off towards soul let's see what this is all about love the artwork like seriously all the artwork is really like concept art like of uh it's just it's concept art quality it's amazing um the engineers of the prune colonial expedition are trying to develop better treatments to improve the health of their crew if they succeed the mortality rate aboard the ship could fall and slowly more prune will be born during their journey towards the soul system. Hmm, okay. So it sounds like a good thing if we can get it to work. Uh, I did just spend 20 bucks on plants, so probably, <laughs> probably going to be more than that. Please state the nature of the medical emergency. Emergency medical hologram on tar Star Trek Voyager. Again, great quotes. Great quotes. Um, all right. Let's see what we got here. Oh, look at them. They're like halfway there. Um, main objective. Oh, we're actually doing pretty okay here. I think. Let's see. The results of the fusion engineers exceed all expectations. They're able to ensure that everyone on the Prune Colonial Expedition is in optimal health, and that costs nothing for the maximum. Interesting. With limited possibilities on the Prune Colonial Expedition, the onboard engineers manage to improve some of their treatment methods with time the number of Prune on board increases a bit. Okay. And then, dead end, the medical treatments that were developed to improve the health of the crew uh, relive the pain of some sick Prune, but the engineers could not lower the mortality rate at all. Okay. So, problem, I mean, I'm just going to go for this one. More people. Um, their, their home world is dying, so it's probably best. Um, and it didn't cost anything, so let's go for that one. Alright. So we definitely need some more resources with more people. The logistic officers of the Prune Colonist crew are creating new procedures to optimize the waste prevention of the Prune Colonial Expedition. Cool. Um, I'm not too worried about casualties, so let me just go ahead and go for something random. Right. I wish that, um, I would say something would be nice, uh, because it's really hard to see what is changing over here. Um, maybe giving me some sort of idea of, um, of what changed between the last time and that. Because especially with the question mark, per se, I don't know if I'm gaining or losing something. Um, but I definitely, uh, enjoy the randomness there. Internal crew conflicts cause unrest and hopelessness among the colonist, colonist crew of Colonial Expansion. I'm just going to go for the regular one. Uh, will we ever arrive at our destination alive? Oh, 
Let's go for the next, uh, let's go for the question mark again. So casualties went up, I think. I don't know. Uh, the optical computer system is testing the functionality of the droid launcher systems. Uh, I mean, I might as well go with the lowering the casualties. The numbers of robotic infantry in the Prune Colonial Expedition is decreased, and these Prune are assigned non-military positions among the colon colonialist crew. The robotic infantry are changing their appearance towards what the fusion engineers of the Colonial Expedition think what the population of the Soul System looks like. Changing their appearance toward what the fusion engineers of the Colonial Expedition think what the population of the Soul System looks like. Okay, so it sounds like the robots are changing so that they look more human rather than more prune. Let's see if we go back here. Alright. Good, so we can see everything we got here. We got the Rama tribes, our plants are growing over here. Solar nomads are doing okay. Uh, the prune expedition's doing the best. And then they're getting real close. So let's see what the humans are up to. Aw. It's Algernon. The humans create a global system of interconnected networks which link all computing devices together. Cool. The internet... <laughs> Wait a minute, We've, we're just creating the internet just now? The internet is the world's largest library, it's just that all the books are on the floor. Alright. So, with the internet, we can reach a dead end, which we abolish the internet in fear of losing control over the information flow on Earth. We can do regular development, which the privilege of the internet access is granted only to specific groups of humans who hold license to surf. Ah, that, as someone who loves the internet this much, that, that hurts. But I don't have enough money uh, or enough synthesis in order to gain the civilization pillar where the computer network becomes a crucial part of civilization, influencing every aspect of daily life among the humans. So I don't get to have the information uh, generation going on here, so we're going to go with the regular development and play that out. Oh, uh, gosh, we're gaining. We're so close to getting to the next tech level. Um, all right, so more fossil fuels. Good, good for us. I mean, I wish we could change that to not be fossil fuels, um, but it doesn't seem like that's an option yet. Video games of the humans are showing ways of living in harmony with Earth. Good. Okay. Um, let's lower the amount of casualties we'll have. Some anti-terror infantry of the humans lay down their assault rifles and abandon the ways of war. Yay! Oh, wait. We're at it. New technological age. Let's hit this. Let's see what happens. Oh, my God. We've reached the cyber age. Okay, so it seems like the pictures um, that are shown aren't necessarily corresponding with... Um, with the species that we're looking at, so these are obviously not humans or prune. Um, I'm pretty sure they're not prune. Uh, they look like something else. Uh, but the concept is still there. So, kind of reminds me of playing the game, the board game Life, where you just get these random cards uh, that, that don't look anything like you. Alright, the Cyber Age. With rapid advancements in artificial intelligence and technology and technologically augmented humans, the civilization undergoes drastic change and reaches new milestones in science, engineering, and the arts. He still dreamed of cyberspace, hope fading nightly, all the speed he took, all the turns he'd taken, and the corners he'd cut in Night City, and he'd still see the Matrix in his sleep bright lattices of logic unfolding across that colorless void. Neuromancer by William Gibson. Ooh, I'm gonna have to read that. Oh god, look, our humans changed! Looks like someone from Cyberpunk now. We got, like, like a fused face and electric eye. It's kinda cool. Alright, Earth is the home of the human nations. Yes, we know this. Alright, so, we could either go for power. The humans prior prioritize military power, creating 
new tools for defense and combat on Earth or elsewhere in space. The fear of yet unknown alien enemies inspires dreams of interstellar conquest. We can go for advancement, which is the free option. The humans focus on innovations in engineering. This includes finding the balance between consumption and resource preservation, advancing the infrastructure of their megacities, and exploring the galaxy beyond Sol. I can get behind that. Um, or we can go for Wisdom. Crossing into the realm of AI, humans now have the ability to vastly improve their societies and facilitate communication with faraway beings. However, new technologies present great risks as well, so a little extra Wisdom couldn't hurt. Huh. So it's more technology and more... You know, I think I might have to pay for this. Just because we're so into dystopia here, and I do want to keep advancing our age level. We're, I, th I think we're actually, no, we're just under where the prune are. I think they're at tech level 8. So, let's go ahead and go for wisdom. I'll just buy it. That was, that was a, good, good, a good chunk there we got going on. Alright, the humans are now able to create endless met metroplexes all over Earth. The Cyber Age technology gives the humans access to resources on easy-to-reach planets and moons of the Sol system. Yay, Rama! How, how the heck are you? How's my favorite plant species? You are not a Rama. You are some sort of weird thing on a elk. Or elk. Ox. Uh, the Rama reached the Bronze Age. Hooray! The Rama start to use simple metals, settle in cities, and document knowledge via written language. The drones of our hive started digging out the metal ore. This was the beginning of our path to grow from a feeblish swarm and become the World Eater Empire. Alright. We're starting to develop here. Okay, Bronze Age. So, we can... We can't afford wisdom, so that's the same thing we went for the humans. Uh, Rama applied the newfound knowledge and communication skills to societal improvements in the building disciplines of medicine, law, and philosophy. Also, I just want to point out, it looks like they're either writing or controlling this, uh, this crab here. So that's their evolution, is that they use the crab to get around. That's cool. So we can go for advancement, so there's more of them and more, um, I wonder if that's their beast herd there, but more resources. Um, or we can go for power, which means that they're going to um, have more potential casualties and more potential dystopia. But we're going to gain some. Uh, you know? As a brand new species, I feel like that's perfectly logical that they would, they would want to be territorial and figure that all out. Mm, yeah, let's go for that. We'll get some synthesis from it. Plus, they're already pretty peaceful, so to have a little little mean streak in them for a bit wouldn't hurt. Uh, the Rama are now able to build stable settlements in the Tau Ceti, on Tau Ceti 3 and then sustain them with agriculture. The Bronze Age technology provides the Rama to access easy-to-mine resources on the surface level of Tau Ceti 3. Alright, we're back with the Solar Nomad Clan. Oh boy. Reduction in Glees. What could this mean? Frugal Supervisors. Supervisors rule the Solar Nomad clans with a sense of moderation and efficiency. Thinking... <coughs> pardon me. Thinking of... Where are we? Thinking of future Glees generations, they try to slow down the resource consumption of the Solar Nomads and preserve... 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 Finite Molten Resources. By sowing frugil frugality, we reap liberty, a golden harvest. <laughs> okay, so, what could this mean? Alright, so, civilization pillar means we're going to get more resources, and for, for nothing. Frugality becomes the cornerstone of nomad culture. Supervisors who embrace moderation are admired and it's seen as a cultural as a, as a crucial part of leadership amongst the clan. 
regular development. These supervisors are not very successful in their era, but optical chips describing nomad idols of frugality become popular among future generations, or the solar nomads are unhappy with their cheap supervisors and, the, and their influence on the clans of Gleese dwindles fast. So right now, doesn't seem like there's too many bad choices. Um, they're at full resource capacity here. Um, they're doing pretty good as far as that goes, so I might just take the synthesis option here by going with the dead end, because that's going to help us later when these two cultures, uh, humanity and them, actually meet, and I can probably, hopefully, stop their war, their inevitable war from happening. Um, let's go ahead, overkill warning. Okay, so harm potential is very high, so we're going to go ahead and go for that and try to pull this down. Yeah, okay. For some reason, it, it lowered the amount of prune. So again, I'm not too certain. Like, negative would be it gains more potential casualties, but for some reason it did the opposite. I'm still not sure which direction it's taking me, but I'll go with the, the basic one here. Uh, an influential nomad supervisor rises to power in the Gleese system. Okay. In the Glee system, a major clan falls apart and loses all its influence. So again, we're losing people. That might just be something else that's happening every time I click on that. I don't know. Let me try it. Let's, let's do a, uh, a test here. Maybe this will be the opposite and we'll gain more people. Nope. <laughs> Still going down. Still going down. Okay. Okay. Oh, destination reached. They reached Earth. Human Multitudes. The Prune Colonial Expedition made contact with the Human Multitudes. Oh boy. This is it. We're in, when's the war starting? Alien Contact. After numerous years of travel, the Prune Colonial Expedition finally arrived at its destination, but the Soul System is inhabited by the Human Multitudes. What is going to happen when the Prune make contact with the humans? Our foremothers were never asked to be discovered. The moment the others came with the ship from the stars, everything changed about our world, and we never could go back. Lele Pulse Dancer. Federal Prison Planet 5. Okay. All right. Ooh. So we have three options, as usual. We can exterminate. After the first contact, both sides are hostile towards each other, and the Prune Colonial Expedition decides to attack the Soul System with full force, which leads to the total destruction of Earth and 33% of Prune ethic and harm value. Yikes. Okay. So they could just destroy Earth, which makes sense. Um, they can observe them. The Prune Colonial Expedition is observing the human multitudes from a safe distance, determining if the humans are a threat, aggressive reaction to prune, 31% of ethic value, or the prune are landing on Earth and they try to directly communicate with the human speakers, um, aggressive reaction of humans, 93% of ethic value, but I don't have any synthesis for that, so we're going to have to stick with observation for now, which sucks, because I really want them to meet, but... If it slow and steady wins this race, I think. Better than wiping out the entire civilization. The Prune Colonial Expedition is observing the human multitudes. Hey, that actually looks like a prune. Alright. The Prune are observing the humans from a safe distance and are evaluating if they should reveal themselves before they continue their journey. Narrative design, that's what we call stealing everything from Wikipedia and TV tropes. Alright. So. Ooh boy. So what could this mean? So, disturbance. The prune decide that the development of the human multitudes should be disturbed and covertly destroy important parts of their scientific infrastructure. Interesting. So I'm just thinking I'm just sitting here thinking, oh gosh, this is awful. Why would this like be an option on here? But I was just thinking earlier, too, if we had created those raptor creatures, you know, uh, that were that are very violent, um, we could, in theory, sort of prune away the bad species that we've created uh, in order to gain synthesis uh, by by kind of correcting it in the um, in the other way when other species meet them. 
Um, let's see. Should be disturbed and covertly destroy important parts. Okay. So, don't want to do that. We can secretly research them. For many years, the prunes studied the society on Earth, and after collecting a massive amount of data, they leave the humans without any trace. Or... Mutual Enlightenment. After a long observation period, the Prune Colonial Expedition contacts the human civilization and share with them knowledge, wisdom, and technology. That is the one I want, and lucky for me, I can afford it. So we're going to go for that. And now they've met. Now they've met. All right. So let's see here. We can... Increase to Utopia. Let's do that. Humans form new media to illustrate the history of their civilization. I've seen that one before. Making documentaries again. Uh, let's lower the amount of casualties. Let's see if this will actually work this time. Good. Casualties lowered. Some anti-terror soldiers of the humans lay down their impulse rifles and abandon the ways of war. So, again, plus sign on the skull means less casualties. Negative sign means more casualties. Alright. New humans... The humans reached the solar age. Yay! I love these, these uh, lizard people we got going on here. The humans are able to explore and colonize their solar system. They started to use advanced robotics and complex genetic engineering to read about cities and huge industrial enterprises and really successful colonials. Colonization, you can imagine what it might have been like with Mars might what Mars ought to be like. Oh, good. Philip K. Dick. Look at them now. So funny. Alright. So. Either the humans create new tools to defend themselves, harm each other, or attack other species. Um, which only gives me a little bit of synthesis. They either advance themselves, so they get more people and more... Um, oh, now we've changed from, uh, I, I, I didn't see what the, the tech, um, the, the cyber age was, but I'm sure it changed here from fossil fuels, but now we've got deep ore deposits. Um, let's see here. New technologies let the humans explore new areas, preserve their natural resources, advance their infrastructure, or build starships, which I like. Or humans use the new knowledge to widen their thinking, improve their societies, or send signals to space, which we cannot afford. So we're going to go for advancement, I think. Earth is home for the human, human, human dominions. All right. And let's see what happens with the prune now that they have made contact. Prune injustice. Sadistic officers. A clique a clique of cruel officers brought themselves into positions of power on the Prune Colonial Expedition and used their authority to torment the weakest of the colonist crew. Nobody gets killed, but daily life aboard the ship will become horrible if this is allowed to continue. Oh, everything I told you is a lie. There isn't, this isn't happening to you for a reason. Well, one reason. I enjoy it. Oh, gosh. I could actually probably do his accent. Ramsey Snow in Game of Thrones. God, he sucks. So we basically have Ramsey Snow uh, messing around with our our colony ship here. Ugh. Good, good quotes, you guys. Uh, bravo, bravo to this uh, this game company here. They've done a good good job with that. Um, so we can create massive injustice. The captain joins the ranks of the torturers, and from now on, their cruel games are no longer hidden. This becomes part of daily life aboard the Prune Colonial Expedition. Um, the officers cannot risk being open about the cruel games they play with the colonist, colonist crew, but they manage to implement many hidden methods to torture and manipulate the unlucky ones aboard the Prune Colonial Expedition. Or we can prevent it. The colon colonist crew threatens to revolt against the officers, and the captain agrees to throw them out the nearest airlock. So, I mean, it's free, and we can get rid of them. I don't really want massive injustice uh, at the expense of synthesis, so let's go for prevention. Get rid of the Ramsey Snows. Uh, question mark. The optical computer systems of the Colonial Expedition found new and interesting data? Cool. Let's gain more utopia. The colonist crew created a dramatic collection of stories about their life on the colonial expedition. 
the journey may be the most important endeavor in the prune. And let's lower casualties. The crew counselors of the prune colonial expedition inspire the colonist crew to think of peaceful first contact protocols. Um, and let's add resources. The support systems of the colonial expedition were optimized by the prune robotic technicians. And a new captain is appointed to command the colonial expedition. Okay. We have to see we have to see what the plants are up to. We have we have got to see what the plants are up to. Paradigm shift. Alright. The rise of monotheism. With city-states growing and rulers trying to unite, unify their people, the concept of a single god becomes more and more attractive for the Rama. Having people rally around one religion is deemed to be very effective to advance a society, and so monotheism is proclaimed in Tao City. We encouraged a deep. Uh, we encountered a curious hive deep in one of the ash deserts. They do not only pray to just a single magma guardian, but they have the audacity to believe that all other deep guardians are just imaginary figments. Uh, hive Queen Whirl, Artemi Emperor, Second Cycle, Wormwood System. Oh man. So very. The developers here are very much um, understanding of, uh, of societal uh, culture here and, and how things are created and how, um, how societies are built around central ideas, unifying concepts. All right, so they can create cultural ascent, which we cannot afford. Monotheism takes ca uh, Tao Seti th 3 by storm, and the Rama enjoy the new communal rituals that go with it. Soon, a cast of sages emerges that helps the Rama interpret and live by the scriptures of their one god. Uh, cultural expansion, which is going to cost us resources but gain more people. Monotheism becomes dominant, but different interpretations lead to the development of separate sects. These exclusive groups led by sages start to build many new settlements all over Tau Seti III. Or we can create cultural dissent, which means conflicts arise between polytheists and monotheists, both sides equally stubborn in their beliefs, oppression of people of a different faith becomes the norm. Oof. Ooh, yeah, that is that is very much what happens. So we're gonna create more casualties and more dystopia, but we'll gain some synthesis by that. Uh, you know what, I feel like, I hate to say this, but I feel like everybody has to take their lumps when it comes to going through the Bronze, the, uh, <laughs> the Bronze Age, the Steel Age. Um, like, this is, this is what humanity did, going through all of that. Um, so, we gotta take our lumps here. We gotta create bad before we can create good. So let's, let's go with this one and get the synthesis. Alright. So we're going to go with this. Tau, on Tau Seti 3, a group of foresters finds new ways to preserve the resources of the Rama regions. The Rama mourn the death of a beloved leader. Go for, ooh, let's go for technology. On Tau Seti 3, the new ideas of a remarkable sage are passed over long distances among the Rama. And... Again, let's go for that technology. A sage is celebrated on Tau Seti 3 for bringing knowledge to the Rama. Let's go for the question mark. Some spear fighters of the Rama lay down their bronze, bronze spears, and they abandon the ways of war. And are the gods watching us? Indeed, are the gods watching us? All right, folks. I think that is a fantastic ending point to leave the Fermi Paradox. Um, so far, really enjoying what this game has to offer. I'm really enjoying this demo. I'm definitely going to be picking this up when it comes out. Um, not only because it, it kind of goes along with that, um, that sort of... Uh, I don't know. It's like, it's, it's very, it's very simple to play. Um, but there's this, this level of complexity there, and I think a lot of spacefaring games kind of lose that in the, um, in the, just the overarching, like, they just bore you with all sorts of crazy things you have to do and take care of and manage, and this simplifies all of that, so you're just focusing on sort of the bare minimum of, like, 
what is happening with these colonies. It's like you're playing interstellar chess here, where you're just kind of like, I'm just going to move this piece over here, I'm just going to move this piece over here, and just kind of like watch as everything unfolds. So, uh, so far, really enjoying this game, um, and I'm going to definitely be looking into it, um, eager for it when it comes out. But that's it for me today, folks. My name is Kazar, and I hope to see you on the next game.